our guest today was an ex-pop star. Actually, he's a singer and he still is singing, but not for the same reasons anymore. Are you getting curious? Then stay with us for the, for the next half an hour, because we are today having Yusuf Islam, who used to be called Cat Stevens, in our studio. Most welcome. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. How are you doing, inshallah? Alhamdulillah. Barakallahu fiqh. We are very happy to have you here today. Thank you. We will uh, try to talk about art and the different aspects and how it is related to, let's say, to the Islamic art and what you used to do before. But to start with a story, you usually go to the beginning of a story. Could you tell us something about your past and uh, basically how you felt, how you perceived life when you used to be a pop star? Uh, of course, my story has been told many times in different ways, but uh, <coughs> the, main, the main issue is that uh, my life has been, b before Islam, was, was a search. So whether it was my personal life or whether it was my artistic life, yes. I was searching for peace, I was actually searching for big answers uh, to life, and um, I was looking not just for external peace, you know, but internal peace. Definitely. Um, and so my songs, if, if, if people analyze my songs, you will find there are different types of songs. Some were social songs, some were love songs, you know, because that's the business, of the pop business. Yeah. Uh, but many songs were spiritual songs, or songs of searching, of looking at this universe and trying to make sense. Yes. Um, and so, therefore, I would say that I was an artist, uh, but I was mainly a seeking artist who my art enabled me to search for uh, through this universe, through what I see in the world, uh, and looking for that peace, looking for that way of finding peace. Yeah, this is actually it just you said so many times the few words I was going to use in my next question is that end of the 60s and beginning of the 70s all the way through most people really in the search of love and peace these were like you know the the two main words especially in the younger generation that people would use and they would turn to so many different directions and different countries too maybe India or some kind of uh, uh, Buddhist meditation etc now their direction to find your peace and love you, you, you took was actually very different from the large majority of the people back in the UK at that time. Could you just tell us a word about basically your first contact with the, the Muslim community and how it affected your art? Um, well, really I didn't contact the Muslim community until after I discovered Islam. And that's a strange story. Yeah. <laughs> you know, how do you discover Islam without meeting Muslims? Well, I discovered Islam by reading the Quran. So I think I was very fortunate because maybe, uh, you know, someone who sees Muslims today you know, or comes into contact, and if they're not the right Muslim, there are many good Muslims, but mm -hmm. if they meet the wrong kind of Muslim, maybe they will judge Islam by that. Definitely. I never had that chance. I went straight to the Quran, and from that I discovered the essence, what I believe to be the essence of the solutions which God has given us through this revelation, the Quran. And um, of course, th the most important one is how to access or how to approach God. And if you look at other religions, you know, each one, there is something which, if you like, um, diverts one away from the pure devotion and worship of the one God. And so Islam, to me, was the most perfect um, way to approach God without anybody or anything in between or diversions to have the right away, away from God Himself. Mm -hmm. So that's what I discovered. After I was convinced that this is the right path, this is the only path, mm -hmm. this is the, the straight path, then I became Muslim. How do you become Muslim? You, know, <laughs> you, you, you can't do it alone, you have okay. to go to the mosque. Definitely. I went to the mosque and that's where I first became introduced to the Muslim community. All right. Um, 
and of course after that became a, a process of learning um, many things happened um, I was learning listening uh, and then I, I found out that there was more than one school of thought for instance Definitely. you know there's not just one um, like list of rules you know there, there's sh Sharia has many branches yes. so um, that's when I discovered the kind of different opinions mm -hmm. also within Islam. So you started your own search also because it, if we see all the different currents I think uh, it's important to highlight this uh, this issue because a lot of the non-Muslims are really getting lost they don't understand they see a man with a beard they see a look and they think well look what Islam makes valid so it's, uh, this is so important to hear the voice of those who were not Muslims and embrace Islam and start searching for the truth because even if you become a Muslim still there is so much to learn about the religion. That's true. I mean at that point of course you're going to be tested. There's going to be lots of tests and, uh, and uh, as, you, as you asked in your question, you know, how did it affect my art? Yes. Well, uh, to be honest, when I read the Quran there was no particular reference, no clear reference mm -hmm. to music or music business or, you know, <laughs> although there was many references of course towards issues like uh, uh, vanity towards yeah. you know excessive uh, um, luxury yeah. and overindulgence yeah. greed um, you know and, and sex and all, all those kind of things if, if you know what I mean so uh, th 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 there are guidelines regarding a, l a way of life mm -hmm. but no specific reference to music so then I found hadith and sayings of the Prophet peace be upon him um, they were more clear about this issue although uh, at one point I was being told on the one hand that you know uh, it is completely forbidden uh, and on the other hand I found that there was other opinions yes. that there was some allowance yes. but within you know s some restricted guidelines mm -hmm. exactly. so anyway at that point I didn't want to do anything wrong I didn't want to risk <laughs> you know my my, uh, my my future. Yes. So I, I decided to leave everything until I, I had more knowledge and that's what I did. So I, I sold my instruments and at that point it was really a cut in relationship between myself and my past. Yes. I think that cut was a bit harsh because now I'm hearing that many people you know could have maybe come a bit closer to Islam if Definitely. I hadn't done it in such a harsh, you know, very abrupt way. Very but that's right. something I learned. Because there are many paths you could have just gradually diminished a few issues that you wouldn't feel comfortable about, but still, you know, forward the beautiful message with the beautiful words yeah. and just change the songs and, and still be there for all those who loved you at that time. Well, that's, Alhamdulillah, that's it's never too late. <laughs> no, that's <laughs> never too late. And that's, that's why I'm now today, for instance, um, um, looking at some of the old songs which I recorded, Peace Train, for yes. instance. Um, I mean, there's the message of Islam. Islam, the word comes from Salam. Mm. Salam is peace. Subhanallah. So it was already in my, in my work, in my dreams, mm -hmm. in my words, but I hadn't discovered it. Now that uh, I look back at my songs, there are certain songs which quite clearly are halal. You know, yes. no problem with those words. Yes. Um, so I've now come to the point where I'm trying to reconnect with those those people in the West who really honestly need mm. to know something better yeah. about Islam, they need a better approach uh, because they like those songs and because they like you know beauty and, and aesthetics they miss it, uh, they miss it. Mm. so I'm now trying to get in contact with them through reproducing within Islamic guidelines mm -hmm. um, good songs, good words and good rhythms something they can be attracted to. And you did very well, mashallah. Let's have a look at uh, what I would say a comparison of the before and after with that very same uh, song. That would be interesting. Yes, and um, it's far from being boring actually. Well, uh, watching this, it really reminds me this um, wonderful feeling of peace that Islam has brought into my life. I believe you're not strange to, a stranger to it, neither. Um, what kind of message? Is this what you want your songs to reflect? What kind of message do you want to basically communicate to people through your songs now? Well, there are many 
of course many things we want to communicate uh, ultimately we want to show that there is there is beauty, there is meaning and there is peace uh, in Islam what people see today of the tragedies you know which are facing and, and, and uh, encompassing our world um, are really distortions of human life and the Muslim way of life. Mm. I mean when the Prophet peace be upon him said and told us and mm. taught us this um, uh, prayer Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam mm -hmm. rabbana bis salam tabarakta rabbana wa ta'alayti ya da jalali wa ikram I mean there are different uh, du'as but essentially that, that spirit is, is not seen by many people mm -hmm. they don't see the prayers you know, the, the, they know the little about the spirituality exactly of the so that's kind of part of it mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is there's an educational edge and I think it's very important also to, to realize that whatever we do we must have an educational it's, it's towards enhancing knowledge Definitely. understanding um, and so it's not just words for the sake of filling yeah. a song you know this is not we're not just talking about yeah, making course. rhymes okay we're really talking about giving meaning and and I've written a few poems recently and I think people will be interested in what we have to say. Great. But peace is one of those words that when you hear it, the next word that comes to the mind is very often hope. And uh, I would like to have your opinion, now you're back in the media and your activities, your work is very much related to the media. So as a Western, uh, let's say Westerner Muslim, um, how do you feel that uh, the, the, the media is currently portraying the, the image of Islam and the situation of uh, well Muslims it's something different I would say you know you can never judge the religion just on the reflect of people but Islam this beautiful religion Uh, we have a very big difficulty, of course, with with uh, the way in which the media has been, um, if you like, uh, enclosed or, or, or has been grabbed by big business. So it becomes a means of making money and, and when you come to that then the whole objective is to satisfy the nafs, you know, to satisfy people's mm. longing to see more and more, uh, you know, uh, people undressing. I mean that's what we see on television. The ego, what the, the ego, ego wants to have and feed and feed more and then go to, to those uh, exaggerated extremes that are very unhealthy exactly. for the society. I mean, I just think that there is enough that we can offer but we need to find a way of uh, transmitting our way of life through the media and uh, filtering um, if you like um, our artistic message through uh, our belief in the divine and the, our belief in Islam we don't sort of leave our Islam here and then we go into the media <laughs> we have to find a way of, of, of making it real mm -hmm. from Islamic point of view and I think the, the problem will be and, and it is today that some Muslims have just said well we go for the media and regardless of you know Islam that's and that's wrong yeah. we should make sure that we blend and we filter you know whatever we do um, with our belief uh, and, and as we believe in Islam so that's the, that's the difficulty but I don't think it's, it can be that difficult um, if we try I think the only thing is we are we are compelled to try yeah definitely people need really to start making those changes and and Islam is a way of life and this is the only way we can forward the message to people by portraying the best image we can to others and especially to those non-Muslims and um, I would like to ask you also to you know regarding these values and we're talking about the different ways of life from one society to another I would say that the, the large majority of new Muslims, and especially in these past years, 
are we could say in between two cultures you know just like you and me probably we westerners but at the same time of course and, and uh, uh, with pleasure we very much indeed influence and enjoying the influence of the Islamic culture so we have this contrast of the before and after how do you think or what are the values you think that is, uh, Islam or the Islamic culture could give to those Western societies, to our countries that are actually, you know, you know those values that we are losing mm. nowadays. Uh, well, it's obvious that if you look at the history and uh, recent history, um, you know, the spiritual values, religious values, have been disappearing, you know, from the Western yes. um, society. Um, it's advancements in technology um, and in science um, with its drive for economic goals you know has actually forced it to, to leave behind an incredible treasure which I believe we have you know. <laughs> yes. now the problem is we appear to be backwards because we're kind of mm. to some Westerners we appear well you know what have we produced actually when we were at the forefront of our strength in Islam we were yes. at the forefront also of science Yes. and developing those things which human being needs um, you know in so many fields of science of optics and medicine and, uh, geography and uh, anthropology so therefore I think that we need to reclaim this educational uh, ground and, and that way I think that we can also make sure that, th that we can infuse today's world with spirit because we, we have the answers, as, as far as I can see, we have the answers, but a lot of Muslims also are not delivering those answers no, to, the, right. to the West. We're kind of, you know, we're looking at our pieces, our land, our borders, and, and really we should be talking about universal issues. No, right. And, you know, that's, that's what I believe Islam is. You, you pointed out something really nice because sometimes when we talk about values a lot of people will go like of course this is important you know all these problems we have with pedophilia or uh, drug abuses and you know these kind of issues that are more and more available and especially in some so called civilized or advanced or modern societies but this, uh, this issue you just pointed out I think needs to talk a little more about it and definitely I, I remember when I was uh, a teenage or even later on in my studies and for the large majority of, uh, of the studies you can have in Europe or in Western societies you would get very very little information about the beautiful heritage we have from uh, Muslims or from Arabs generally talking mm. very often we hear it comes from the Romans and mm. the Romans they had it from who knows where you know it's it's not really specified that not so long back before actually uh, people came from uh, North uh, Africa or from different uh, Arabic countries we had very little here in Europe just to start with Spain for instance people used to wear their clothes until they were completely uh, finished because they didn't even wash them they didn't know what soap was they didn't have mathematics even medicine all these issues I mean go to the small thing to the you know the, even the luxury though it's not recommended in Islam but the silk and all these materials coffee and even the furniture at home all of these issues come from the Arabs and the Islamic culture would you like to tell a word about that well, I think you explained it all. Most, most of it has been explained uh, in your question because, again, people are locked out of information. Information which we know <coughs> we have in Islam, in our history, uh, connected to you know, the, the, the kind of um, a contribution which Islam made to civilization. If you look at any history book today, Western history book, you know, you'll find a few pages, this you know, a few it's pages, it's and you'll see so much about the Romans, yes. you know, okay, uh, I don't know why they don't mention more about the Greeks, actually, because maybe yes. Greece had more influence on the Romans, but anyway, um, there's so much kind of imbalance there, that's where we come down again, it is not a matter of waiting for others to do this work, it's a matter of Muslims, you know, getting up and devoting themselves to this work. It's not, we can't point fingers and blame everybody because of our situation. No, no, definitely. We have to change yes. you know, our attitude mm -hmm. and contribute. Definitely. That's how we did it in the past, that's how we've got to do it now. We're going to do it, inshallah. Sure. What a beautiful song. 
Um, could you tell us a word like as a conclusion because we are getting to the end of uh, the program about your work and uh, whatever you feel you know just you'd like to share with the viewers as a last word basically. Um, yeah what you've seen today is, is an effort uh, which we've been uh, working on uh, to let's say to convey the message of Islam through our uh, company or, or mountain of light and we have a lot of I think a lot of talent which is going to come out very soon in the future and um, I believe that if we can inspire the youth um, to regain their love of Islam mm -hmm. and their adherence and their belief um, I think that tomorrow inshallah will look better.